continued, perpetuated by the inaction of politicians. For a while it was Greece, and Greece is not a big deal. Greece is a small country, it doesn't have such a big problem, and so on. But, of course, the inability of the European governments to act decisively on Greece then caused people to wonder, what about Portugal? What about Spain? And so now confidence in a number of countries has eroded, and confidence in the European leadership has eroded, and so the problem is much, much bigger. So we are now on the verge of a real run. Greece already, a third of the capital of Greece, a third of all the savings have been taken out of the country. So, rich so they Greece, had a run on their banks. Yeah, the rich people in Greece, they say, look, maybe Greece is leaving the euro, and I better get my money out. I better bring my money to Austria or to Germany or to Britain. I don't want to invest my money in Greece anymore. I don't want to be here when Greek, Greece goes back to the drachma, the old currency of before it joined the European currency. And we, people in Spain are beginning to do that. People, rich people in particular, are taking their money out of the weaker countries and shifting their money into the stronger countries and thereby are magnifying the problem. The problem becomes bigger and bigger. Why? Because if uh, people take money out of Spain, then Spain has to pay higher interest rates in order to fund its budget. And if Spain has to pay higher interest rates, then its problem becomes larger. Because the problem was one, there wasn't enough money in Spain. And if they have to pay higher interest rates, then uh, not having enough money becomes an even bigger problem. Because you need more money to pay the interest on your national debt. So the crisis of confidence is spreading, and if we don't take decisive action soon, this will be a very big explosion, a very, very big problem. And the problem could easily be global, because if Europe uh, has a big financial crisis of confidence, if in Europe demand for goods and services drops rapidly, then, of course, Europe will export, uh, and sorry, import a lot less. So those who export to Europe from China, from the United States, from Latin America, uh, those people will find that Europe is buying less of their stuff, and that could easily have recessionary implications in those other parts of the world. So the North Atlantic crisis, the mainly European and North American crisis, uh, can very easily become a global crisis and hopefully it will not be so bad in the global south th this time around because the global south is now much larger. So China, India, Brazil, South Africa are larger, more powerful economically and hopefully they can, through their demand and trade with each other, reduce the impact that the crisis in the North Atlantic countries is going to have worldwide. But for Europe itself, I think there is a reason to be pessimistic for the next two or three years, especially if European politicians continue to middle around and continue to be unable to take joint decisive action to get that crisis resolved. Uh, just your views on Hollande in France, can he do much? Well, uh, it's very difficult for him, right? He's been president only for a few days, uh, and he has to work together with Merkel, who is the chancellor of Germany, and those two people don't yet have a good working relationship, right? Merkel is not exactly a social democrat, and uh, Hollande, of course, is on the left, and so they have different ideological outlooks, they have different ideas about macroeconomics. Uh, Merkel is more a free market type who thinks that the answer is austerity. Hollande is more of a Keynesian who thinks that we should uh, try to introduce you know, government action, government spending and so on. So it's unclear whether those two can come to an agreement and those two, of course, are decisive 
for the euro. Uh, Britain is not in the euro. Britain still has the British pound. Mm -hmm. So the European currency uh, depends on those two it's, big guys. It's the Franco-Prussian uh, industrial base. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so uh, the uh, election of Hollande may even make things worse because it makes it harder for the two most important countries to agree with each other about what to do. But we might be surprised, you know, maybe they can agree, maybe they can t take some concerted action. Certainly Europe is rich enough in aggregate to solve this crisis, but they have to act decisively and they have to act, they have to put their own money at risk to restore confidence before everybody runs away with their money, before everybody asks for their deposit back and shifts the money to some other place that they regard as safer. Are they, are they going to ask philosophers about this? Lots of what? Are they going to ask philosophers about this? The, the, uh, I doubt it. No, they're not going to ask philosophers, they're going to ask economists, and maybe that is actually a good thing, that they ask economists. But they have to ask the right economists, you know, not the uh, people at the World Bank who are often uh, inclined to do what's good for the United States, but they have to ask people at the European Central Bank and uh, I think that uh, a good dose of Keynesianism is actually uh, would be quite healthy for the European economy. We have now not just an economic problem, but we have a consequent political problem with very high unemployment, mm -hmm. especially among young people. And that is very demoralizing. You know, when the economy is going badly, nobody's hiring new people. And that means that the young people who finish their education and come on the job market uh, don't get jobs. They don't get the skills. And for, yeah, and for young people, this is very, very frustrating. Can you have just finished 17 years of education, mm -hmm. and nobody wants to employ you. Right, and, and uh, China's got a lot of employment, a lot of investment, South Korea, Japan. Uh, they're going to continue to be retooled, and their skills are going to be up to date whereas the workers that are not working are going to lose their skills. It's a major, right. major issue. Right, and the economic losses in terms of uh, human resources and in terms of uh, skills, technological innovation and so on, the, the losses could potentially be staggering. Mm -hmm. You have a good example with Japan, right? Japan has just uh, had a new low in its stock market the stock market in Japan is lower than it has ever been in the last 28 years. So it's amazing. For 28 years, the stock market has gone down now. And uh, that reflects, of course, a stagnant economy. Uh, again, with, you know, the unemployment is not terribly high, but certainly it's, uh, the country is stagnating. And uh, it is a protracted financial crisis that has weighed on Japan. Mm -hmm. So Japan is an example of what Europe could be if it doesn't get its act together, if it doesn't act decisively now. That's great. Thomas, thank you very much uh, for your time today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. All the best. Yes, thanks.